Tonight is an awesome night and I want to read some scriptures to prepare us even though we may feel that we may be small in numbers now but the word that needs to be released tonight comes at a price comes with a blessing and it comes with a warning and there will be things revealed tonight that is the fullness of time it will, that is to be revealed so before doing that we are going to lay the ground for the word that the Holy Spirit and His angels wants to bring forth all revelation has a timing all revelation must be given in its proper time and it is time to reveal a little bit more digesting from all that our prophet has brought forth all that scroll angel has brought forth all that the spirit of wisdom has brought forth and putting it all together the Holy Spirit instructs that this warning be given first for this series that we're going to call uh, the rapture series it's going to be all about these end times I thought of calling it seven thunders and everything but we leave the seven thunders as it is this will be a rapture series and it comes with these uh, certain warnings in the book of Psalm chapter 25 Psalm chapter 25 it tells us in verse 14 the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant and remember that tonight you're privileged to hear some secrets from the Lord and it is with those who fear him you will be blessed but those who do not fear Him and take the things that are to be unveiled lightly, you will be judged. With the blessing and with the curse that comes with this message, and this is the warning that the Lord asked to read also in the book of Moses, and that is in the book of Deuteronomy. And just as it was presented to the people so it is presented to us this day that God will have us choose his blessing God will have us choose uh, his words and his blessing Deuteronomy chapter 28 and I will read the whole thing as most of you know the blessings in verse 1 to verse 14 but I'll read the warnings that are inside and you know all the blessings include everything you need spirit, soul and body that tonight as you hear this message absorb in the spirit and I know there are those online too and there are those who are going to hear this word as this message is recorded and pass on down the line to many many thousands of people in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 it says now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which the Lord commands you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and I mean all nations of the earth today in the modern world and all these blessings shall come upon you your children your children's children and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God in the message that it brings forth to you tonight on the other hand, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, 
But it shall come to pass. If you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments and all His statutes, which the Lord commands you today, all these curses that are listed here and more will come upon you and overtake you. For those of you who fear the Lord, you have nothing to fear. And I also, out of the love and compassion from the Lord, want to mention that of course there are those who are young Christians who might take these things lightly and go and look at them and understand their spiritual level and they might take these things lightly and as they mature, then they realize how serious the word of the Lord is. And then, the Lord will give some grace. And we welcome those who have the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Inquiry. And you are like the disciples of Berea who examine the Word, examine your heart and examine the Spirit of God to test all the revelations with the written Word to test all the revelations with the spirit that is inside you. The anointing that is in you is able to teach you and guide you into all truth. And it will confirm those things that God will bring forth tonight that it is indeed the last day message. And it is indeed the message for the church of Jesus Christ. Tonight we release this word, not just to you humans, but we release this word also to the angels and to all the witnesses in heaven, the watchers above, who understand the significance and the time that the church has entered and come into. You know the standing, even if your eyes are not open in our midst, our witnesses tonight of the spiritual dimension, to the word that is to be delivered. And with this word comes blessing. And with this word comes a warning. That there you are welcome for those insincere in the Lord. To examine the word. Examine your heart. Pray and test these revelations in the Lord. Test all things. Hold fast to that which is good. As is exalted in 1st Thessalonians chapter 5. But... Those who are of the age of accountability in the spirit, those who should know better than to mock the things of God, to take lightly some of the revelations that will come forth, God will hold you accountable and you will die in one day if you mock this word, if you mock the revelations that God is bringing forth for this end time church. You will die as Herod died, and the judgment of the Lord will be severe upon you, whether you have been a Christian for a long time or not. So I adjure to you, I appeal to you, if you cannot take this revelation, at least put it on the shelf, and say, i examine it later again. But do not mock, do not take lightly, do not go against it because the angels of the Lord will strike you down. You will not last. Your life will be terminated because we are in the end times. We may be few in number now, but over the next 10 years and 20 years, within 20 years, this whole planet will know of this move that those few of you are privileged to know. Because it will be a different world that we live in. And this is indeed the last and the end time message. So we share it with love, we share it with compassion, and we share it with an appeal to please do not take it lightly. For those who have a tendency to mock, to jeer, to come against God, to challenge God, I appeal to you, do not let the curse come on you or the judgment of God. But to those of you who love the Lord, those of you who love His Word, those of you who know in your heart that we have entered into the end times, you will be blessed greatly. 
You take these revelations, you absorb it into you, and the Lord will set you above all the nations of the earth to be the head and not the tail. Today we stand, when we cross the midnight hour, the 23rd of February, counting every single day, it will be the 14th day after the first anniversary of Pergamos. Every day and every timing is specific and has a pattern. The number 14 speaks about the Passover. On the 14th day of the month of Abed, they enter into a new dimension. Today, you enter into a new spiritual dimension. Today, a new level of revelation will be released. And we appeal to you, those who fear the Lord, seek the Lord when you hear this. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord Jesus, ask the Father God, ask the Holy Spirit, search the word. But do not mock it. Test this revelation by all means, like every good astute scholar, a Christian, like the Berean Christians would do. But test it with a heart wanting to hear the voice of the Lord in these end times. Also, the seven thunders was released on November the 14th. 2012. Exactly 14 days later, plus and minus, counting each day, inclusive, on the 27th of November, we so happened to be in Sydney, going to Canberra, seeking to build an altar to the Lord and it was a different altar seeking a place to build an altar to the Lord for the angel, the archangel that is in charge of the end time caring of the people of God and it was when we were transported and taken in the spirit and we were transported spiritually and physically taken and placed near the place where the archangel was it was given also as a sign it occurred about 14 days after the seven thunders not our planning but it so happened to be the timing that God by his predestination has so ordained and now a day comes for something because we are measuring the end times by only decades. We do not measure the end times by centuries anymore, by decades. And because of the importance of everyone who participate in these end times, and our prophet included, that this word that the Lord says that on November the 27th when we were transported there was also something imparted into our physical bodies besides our spirit that if we believe and accept this that the angels have blessed us with that it was a strength and an anointing in the spirit, soul and body to last through all the end times to fulfill the will of God in our lives. And those of us who are transported, you believe, and there are three of us, but it will flow through your family too. And to your children's children. And it continues for and to those around. There will not be a single sick day. That says the Lord. You will not even have one sickness come on a single minute, on a single second, because there was an impartation that day. And there's sufficient energy that will come upon each one, even of those of you who participate. For this day, said the Lord, 
It is time does to reveal. I've been waiting on the Lord to reveal this. And uh, when we were in Mukawe, um, the Lord blessed each one of us different things. And some of you were blessed, um, Enoch, Elijah, and all the other various things. And because of the call and destiny that God has upon my life, God has chosen the Archangel Raphael, and He gave me a choice to ask for some things. And those were secret, but now that it has been answered, the Lord said, I can reveal this tonight. It is so that you know that from this day forward, that it is come to pass, and it is so. And it will be so. And it needs to be proclaimed, the Lord says. The confirmation for that was with the vision when you saw the rapture. And uh, in the rapture, of course, Pastor David is going to go uh, when he's 91, and that will be 2048. Rapture is going to happen uh, after that. But then not, not that long after that either, too. And uh, some of you are going to live very long. Uh, from what we know, Eddie's going to live a couple of years after Pastor David. <laughs> Some of you are going to die a year or so before him. And uh, he did say something about you putting on weight. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the Lord, what must this be exactly it? The Lord says, uh, now this is what the Lord says, even though he has revealed, some of you are privileged in the download, that it is still subject to your obedience. At any moment, any blessing of God is subject and conditional upon you. It assumes that you're walking as you walk now. But at any time that you walk away out of God's will, someone else will take your place. God's destiny will go on. But someone else will take your place. So remember to walk with the Lord, those of you who have that knowledge. I know. So with that, and so God has answered as I shared that out of the four things I asked from Archangel Raphael, because I've been praying for some of those things for nearly 30 odd years, to be translated without seeing that like Enoch. And so God has answered that and confirmed that uh, uh, I will not see that that I will be right there until the last next generation. In fact, there is uh, our generation, the next generation, and then the next generation. And that's it. And I really saw that in 1997 when I went to Australia. And the details came more and more clearer. As when you share, it triggers some things also. All those things that the Lord has showed. And, uh, there will be a last, uh, as an apostle of God appointed to the church, there will be a last instruction given to the church just before the rapture. And it won't be the rapture, but it will be translated before the rapture. And it will not be a secret translation. There will be instructions given, and as all the instructions are given, after it is given, it will be publicly translated, taken up. And then the rest will fall upon the shoulder of the next generation. Monkey see that representing that. And there's a reason to, after I show you the chart on all those things. But there's another three items. And uh, there were four items, four things I asked from God. And uh, I do know that and the Archangel uh, that was working with William Branham uh, is going to come in my next phase. My life is measured by phase by phase, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. It's measured from 20, uh, 1976 onwards and uh, so we are in the decade of glory and it's 2006 to 2016. So the next decade is the decade of love, it's 2016 to 2026. And somewhere inside, I'll tell you when, is when the uh, other archangel will join. And their archangel is not just for healing, but their archangel is in charge of signs and wonders. And so it is our destiny to do signs and wonders. 
in the next decade. And we're talking about very, very short time. We are in the end times. How many are we in the end times? The beast has already been born. In 2011, when Pastor David was in his first phase, you had a vision of the beast, or the human being who represent the beast or the false prophet, as mentioned in the book of Revelation 13. Uh, there is the two creatures, the beast and the antichrist. Uh, the false prophet and the antichrist. And in November, when you saw, he was about eight years old. And uh, that's 2011. 2012 is about nine years old. 2014, when we finished phase three, he is about ten years old. The beast has already been born. And after we finish phase three, when we have gone around all the uh, seven countries, eight altars, but seven countries, building all the altars, sometime after we finish, may not necessarily be immediately, but sometime after we finish, the Antichrist will be born. And so, if the Antichrist going to be in his prime between 30 to 50 years old, I want you to know time is now very, very short. Very, very short. And the second thing that God said must be released tonight into the spirit so that the powers of darkness cannot claim what belongs to the church. And one and uh, uh, second thing, there are some the Lord is uh, power over all sickness and diseases. And uh, so that is not going to wait until uh, the arrival of the other archangel in the next phase. This is the decade of love, uh, this decade of glory, the decade of love. Uh, that one is signs and wonders. But since the 40 day fast, uh, will be able to proclaim that that has also been sealed from Archangel Raphael. Now it doesn't mean that I can go to the hospital and empty the hospital beds because like Jesus, you can do nothing except what the Father shows you, except what Jesus shows you. And over today, but well, one thing we can tell more things than before. So just today, I went to visit uh, uh, one of the persons who uh, we have witnessed Christ Three years ago, when he first came to came to Singapore, and this was a brother, one of the sisters in the Lord, who been praying for his salvation. And three years ago, he was going through different uh, ailments, and uh, we told him, and I had a word for that person, and I said, if we don't turn to the Lord, he's not going to live very long. And uh, so today we visit him because uh, he's now in hospital. And of course, uh, he's desperate for some something to happen in his life, some miracle. When I look into his eyes and into his spirit, uh, the good thing is he finally accepted Christ. He's born again. But as I stood there knowing that the Lord has given power over all sickness and disease, but if the Lord don't do anything, he cannot do anything. And as I look into his heart and his spirit and discern whether the power can come upon him, the Lord says he will have a short life. And he has passed the point of grace to live longer. If he had come to know the Lord three years ago, he might have changed and added years to his life. But he has passed the grace period and all the judgment for his sins are falling on his body. Jesus forgave his sins. He is born again, thank God. And I encourage the sister in the Lord that his spirit is definitely safe. Uh, but it's like a newborn child. But I told the sister, fortunately, it's past the time when he could receive a miracle. And he will soon, he has a very short time. And so, I share that so that you know that we can do nothing without Jesus. But on the other hand, 
whatever sickness and diseases you have right now or ailments this is your blessing tonight this is your blessing those who are hearing this and your destiny is to live a good healthy life to live long to do God's will you do not have to have your sickness today you hear this word you believe it tonight and we release upon you the power and over sickness and disease and tonight you will be perfectly whole and healed and that goes on to all those who are destined to live long lives to serve God in this end time to live a long and full life to be the head and not the tail this is your blessing tonight too and the blessing of the Lord that comes and so all these things are in the perfect timing the other item that our angel of us says can be released is the power of wealth wealth does not belong to the antichrist wealth does not belong to the beast although they will have wealth the church and the glorious church will own the blessings of Abraham just as Abraham and his seed that was the Jews became the head and not the tail under King David and King Solomon so the church has received the blessings of Abraham Galatians 3 13 and 14 and the blessings of Abraham must reach its fullness in the church before the rapture and we proclaim this to be so it is not our jurisdiction to determine how and how the world come and the methodology but in the name of the Lord Jesus we this day do proclaim that wealth belongs to the church and that wealth is going to come to the church and we will need the wealth because after seven plus seven years two sevens from the time that the seven thunders is released in November 14, 2012 after seven plus seven years likened unto the seven years of prosperity and the seven years of famine of Joseph after 14 years you will come to around 2026 and around 2026 to 2027 which will be seven plus seven years after the seven thunders is released there will be the fall of Babylon the world will change the two fallen angels that are bound near the area of Siberia about probably about 100 120 kilometers from where the meteorite just hit Are going to be released the world will change we are only talking about two sevens of years you do not have much time but in the next 14 years you will see wealth change hands and the church come to its fullness it will be a time of Joseph and even in a time of famine you notice something because some of you are going to say with all these things happening in the world how will we prosper as Joseph prospered and Joseph's brethren prospered and as Jacob who represents Israel prospered so will the church prosper and in the seven plus seven years well will change hands and the church will need a lot of wealth because we have to bring in 
millions of believers to the refuge areas. The refuge areas will have to be that, will have to be instituted within seven for seven years. Thus we proclaim in the name of the Lord and hear all oh, angels, hear you foul demon power, we proclaim against you that all the blessings of Abraham come upon the church of Jesus Christ. And you cannot touch that which belongs to the church. And we release it forth from the north, south, east and west. That the church will be the head and not the tail. For a moment. For some decades. And the church will control that. And the people of God who represent the church. Will have the wealth. And after the two fallen angels are released. Around 2026 to 2027. The fall of baby lost. Everything that you heard about in the seven times. All those disasters that you hear about are going to take place from 2026-27 right on to 2048 when the prophet goes home to be with the Lord. Those are going to be critical years. From 2027, 2026, 2027, after the 14 years are over, you have 14 years of grace to prosper, to grow in the Lord. And if you find it hard to believe now, by the time we reach the next decade, 2016 to 2026, God will confirm for you with signs and wonders. And you will know that this word is from the Lord. Because by that time, we will have, when the archangel comes and joins us, we will have like the rod of Moses, figuratively speaking, to demonstrate signs and wonders. And it will be time. Now don't wait until the signs and wonders come to believe God. It might be late. But by the time the signs and wonders come, it is so that people can believe it is the true and the living God speaking. But until then, it's for your faith in the Word. In the written Word. And your faith in the spoken Word is released to you today. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But whosoever believe, these blessings will be on you. Whosoever believe this day and this night, these words, these blessings are on your life this day. All the blessings of Abraham. And as we look at some of these timings that God has for us, I realize that Time of the end has come. And every single one of us is living in the end times. Whether some of you are in the rapture or not, the most important thing is to know that you're living concurrently with the beast and the antichrist. It is a different church. It won't be like the church that people think about, oh, let the revival be like the Evans Roberts revival. Even that revival is not enough to contain the Antichrist and the beast. Oh, it will be like the first great awakening, the second great awakening. Even that great revival is not enough to contain the beast and the Antichrist. Oh, it will be like the Pentecostal revival. We want to revive it again. Like all the revivals we have heard. All the revival for the past 2,000 years of church history are insufficient to contain what the fallen angels are up to 
what the beast is up to and what the Antichrist is up to. You need a new fresh revival. A revival that eyes hasn't seen, ear has not heard, nor enter into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for this end time. And the church will rise in power. The church will rise to understand signs and wonders. And they will do the works of Jesus, the greater works of Jesus. And they will demonstrate the power of God. They will have a supernatural supply. And as we come closer to the rapture, even before that, a decade or so before that, the church will experience a lot of transportation in the spirit. Some of you who live right now and hearing this word will experience what it's like to be, like feeling, to be caught from one place and carried to another place. This will be so common that we learn our faith level rises. And we could understand and we become like those in Psalms 25 verse 14. We fear only our God. And when He speaks His word, we tremble because we know His word comes with a dust, says the Lord. And these are the times that we live in. We are close to the end times closer than you could imagine. Some of you could be planning a lot of different things, thinking that you got another 100 years, 200 years, you're planning for your great, 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 great grandkids. You won't, the, you, the world won't be that long. It's time to look at the world differently. Now, 1st Thessalonians, 2nd Thessalonians, teach us the, not to do some wrong things too. Some people may immediately quit their job and then be jobless. Some people may sell all they have and then uh, uh, thinking that they the end, but then the end is not quite near and then they end up in debt. Some people were trying to borrow a lot, thinking rapture is coming, so they may not pay back. <laughs> <laughs> but the rapture took longer than day before. <laughs> Bankrupt. So these are the foolish things not to do. You live your life responsibly. Do the things that God asks you to do. But understand that you don't have that long to go. It is a very, very short time. In fact, within the next two decades, the world will change in front of you. It will change completely. Remember, after the seven thunders, some of you are asking, when will these things be? Two sevens. Seven plus seven. From the time that the two fallen angels are released, and I can release that day because we already our calculation based on that. 7 plus 7 years from the release of the 7 thunders is 14 years of grace to grow and prepare the Lord. But the moment we hit the next decade, as the two fallen angels are released, by that time the beast will have grown up, the Antichrist will be a young man. And he'll be watching all those things. And between the time of the release of the two fallen angel, our angels, until the homegoing, and that is a calendar for the homegoing of the prophet in 2048, the whole world will be alive. We will live in a world without the United States. We will live in a world that is 
a war within powers. King of the North, Russia, and the King of the East, China. And they will rule the world. The powers that be will be stirring until the world aligns according to the seven thunders like you saw the map. In seven thunders, we show you the map. What the world looks like. All the disasters predicted will come forth. And during those times will come a huge mighty shaking of the earth. So great that it will cause a huge tsunami bigger than the world has ever seen and it would just, won't just affect a country, it will affect countries millions will die from that shaking and it will be so huge somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean the earth will move it will be so huge they cause a huge tsunami to go all towards the eastern side of Asia. Millions will die in Philippines, Korea, China, Japan, all will be affected. Singapore, all these will be affected. Malaysia, also affected. The tsunami was so high, I never seen before. And the same wave, the wave was split. One to Asia, one towards North and South America. And all the other side also will be wiped out. Millions of people will die, so many that nobody could send aid. All this will happen after the release of the two fallen Avengers. Somewhere between their release and the home going of our prophet. You will live to see all these things happen. So know that even countries are not secure. All your stocks, your shares, your properties, assets, all God in a moment. This knowledge is given to those of you who believe so that you can plan right now. Say, Lord, should I reveal all this? And the Lord says, yes. Because some of these things to plan to change your life will take the next 10 years and the next 20 years. That's why you're given 7 plus 7 years. To rearrange and replan your whole life. Not to worry. We will plant churches all over the world. But as the time comes near, we will sound the alarm. And says to those of you in America, our beloved disciples who are there, we will sound the alarm and tell you to get up. Those of you in Asia, in Philippines, we will sound the alarm and say, please leave. And the warning will be like the warning given by a very young prophet to the Armenians. And that history is recorded in the book by Demo Shakarian, who was the founder of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. In his book, The Happiest People on Earth, he spoke about how, because he's an Armenian, he spoke about how in Armenia, which today is no more country, conquered by Turkey, that there was a very young boy, and the young boy <coughs> drew from the village, drew a map, and says, this is where you all should go. And... Uh, so some people look at the map and try to understand what the map is and uh, in the end, uh, some of them started leaving. Then later on, the young boy, young prophet, 
grew into an elderly man. And then as an elderly man and still a prophet, we do not know what other prophecies he has. Because some prophets in the Bible, when we study the prophets, uh, some prophets in the Bible, some prophets under Elijah and the sons of the prophets, they are the one prophecy prophet. <laughs> but the one prophecy prophecy prophet is powerful. It is it. Remember Jonah. You know, some prophets are one prophecy prophet. Some prophecy prophets are two prophecy prophets. But very mighty. All the energy concentrated on that. So the, the young boy, I do not know whether he had any other prophecy between the time he was a young boy to, to an elderly man. When he was an elderly man, he came and he came to the village of Armenia and says, Now is the time to go! Oh, suddenly he came up like from retirement and told everybody now is the time to go. And Demo Shakarian's parents were among those people who went. And when they checked the map, that map was the United States of America. So a group of Armenians migrated there. And they prospered. And there were some who didn't believe. Those who stayed back, they all got massacred. They all died. Not a single one live. We will tell you, but even now, some of you who are wise, full of wisdom, some of you who are good stewards of your wealth and of all your assets, we are telling you in advance, you got seven plus seven years to consider what you do. And plan it correctly, don't rush, don't do things rashly, don't follow wrong advice, and don't go and ask the prophet what to do. <laughs> don't ask me either. Each one of you want to hear what you must do with all that you are. But this word is brought forth so that you are among those who plan your future. And that those of you who are hearing now, you are in the countries that are going to be facing a lot of destruction. Understand, you got seven plus seven years. It is not that short, but it's not that long either. And this word has to be given because the Lord wants to save His people. This word is given in advance. We could have waited under one year before. Or three years before, I didn't tell you. It's like, hey, what did you tell me? Uh, uh, what did you tell me ten years ago? We are. We have. Now we're doing it. This record is a witness. Because we will remind you three years from that event. And we will remind you one year from that event. And we will remind you six months from the event. And then one month from the event, we leave Eddie to remind you. <laughs> and we will remind you. And this word is given because I know some of you have sought the Lord. The Lord showed me some of your spirits, some of what you are doing. And some of you have been asking God, tell it. Sure us. And some of you have been saying, Lord, we want to be good stewards. We want to do the right thing. Show us, tell us. We need to know some timing. And uh, it's for you and for your sake that it is shown and it is given. And these words will end up with many good people and it will save your lives. It will save your children's lives. It will save your children and children's life. And so, this word has gone forth. In every word from the Lord, there will always be the Haman and the mockers and the false prophets like those who challenge Jeremiah. 
every one of them will die when all the judgment fall. But hear the word of the Lord. That these are the words that come with a thus says the Lord. Two of us bear witness to the word that God has brought forth. And so as we look at the overall things that God is preparing for, we want to lay before you the vision of the church, of the glorious church. In the vision of the New Testament, Jesus was always followed by four angels. There are uh, there is always Michael, Gabriel, who are known in the Bible. But there's Raphael and Uriel, and they are there. And so, we will show you a chart of how this creation and world uh, is tied to all the work of the four archangels. And because this is the place where the church needs to move for the generation that comes. And yes, that is why I give the warning tonight that you will know that our dearly beloved Shama is one of the mighty archangels, one of the four. Do not take this lightly because this way of revelation comes with a price. I know there are some I could sense in my spirit who are out there online who wants to mock. Please do not. You mock and make fun of this at the risk of being killed by a sword from the angels of God. And this word has been delivered also because after the 40 day fast, Remember the sword that was given. This sword represents blessing or curse. Then from thus forward, as these revelations are given, that it will bring blessing to those who receive. It will draw the line. And a curse to those who reject. It is a divining plumb line that has been set aside now. And you remember the cube and the two cubes. And the cube is all, it talks about the fullness of God's work. And to remind you where we are in the cube, and you have uh, uh, the universe cube and then the earth cube, if you all remember the earth cube. So we start with the earth cube that you all remember. The top section, remember the cube, and it has uh, uh, one, two, three, four sides, plus one top and one bottom. That's a little uh, cube. And the top for the earth cube represents heaven. The front panel represents the Old Testament. The back panel represents the New Testament. The left panel, things to come. And... Uh, then the right panel, things unseen. So you all remember that cube. Then there's the other cube which actually is above the earth cube, the universe cube. Where the top represents the trinity. And uh, then the front panel represents the creation of the universe. The back represents Christ ruling in the universe. The left panel represents Christ ruling on the earth. The right panel, the creation of angels. And the bottom, creation of the earth, which leads you into the earth cube. So the earth cube is right there, underneath the universe cube. And we are always seeing the cube like that. But all the cubes represent something. And uh, you find, let's talk about the earth cube. Because... This revival is bringing the church to its full glory. In the earth cube, where uh, the top is he heaven, uh, it reveals 
Christ the Word. John tells us in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. We know God through the Word. Christ is the image of God to us. Now, for a long time we did not understand the, tr the Trinity because we don't have the scientific concepts. So when, when they teach Trinity long ago, one God, three persons. Very confusing for young people. When you teach Trinity, you talk about you know uh, water vapor, ice, and, uh, wa uh, uh, and and water, liquid water. Also very confusing because it was not scientific enough. But if you analyze the word that Christ is the image of the Godhead. The word image means Christ is the visibility of the Godhead. And so the correct way to present the Trinity is God in three dimensions. There is a God dimension that we can never see and be. It's God's dimension. And uh, then there is uh, the dimension of creation, where God revealed Himself. And uh, then in His creation, God revealed Himself in an image. That image when we see is Christ. Christ is the visibility of God. Christ is the dimension of God that we can connect with, contact. And so God is, God is in three dimensions. And uh, so when God reveals Himself through the cube, there is uh, the top panel, the word, the front panel, which is the Old Testament, or actually man's history. The story of Jesus the man. Man's history is the story of mankind. Why Jesus the man? Because the first Adam failed. And Jesus was the last Adam. Notice, he was not the second Adam. He was the last Adam. You can check that out. It's first Adam, last Adam. Because Jesus represents the last of the Adamic race. After Jesus is creating something new. Something new. But the history of Old Testament was the history of man. And the history of man in capsule form actually is Jesus, Son of Man. And uh, in the back panel, which is the New Testament, is actually Jesus, Savior of the world. That's the whole, whole New Testament is how Christ is the last Adam and the second man. That's his title. Why second man? You know, why isn't Cain the second man? No, the word second man is used to represent a fresh new creation that is now in Christ and represent Jesus, Savior of the world. The left panel, things to come. Jesus, Son of God. And... Uh, because we haven't seen all of Jesus in His fullness. And the right panel, things unseen, Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and that is invisibly now, but will be visible when Jesus comes in the second coming in part 2b, like we have taught in 1st Thessalonians. Second coming, landing on the earth, Zechariah chapter 14. It's split the earth into when He's visibly, He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and He rules and judges the whole earth. And uh, not unseen, but will be seen. And of course, the bottom represents uh, the world in which Christ rules over. And then we look over here on the universe cube. And uh, the top, of course, tri tri Trinity, of course, the Father being the fullness of the revelation of God. Even Jesus, when he was in the earth cube, he prayed to the Father. Because He is the image of the Father. He leads us through Him to the Father. And uh, the front panel, creation of the universe, the manifestation of God in His creation. The back panel, Christ ruling the universe. It's Christ ruling, but more than ruling. Christ is the sustainer of life in the universe. The whole universe lives because of the life of God. Even right now, God could snuff out the life of the fallen angels and say that. But God just let it be. Just to sh let us see what evil is like. 
until the creation mature and they understand what evil is like to see evil itself and uh, then God will finish him off right towards the end but Christ is not just ruling it's a sustainer of life in the universe the left panel which is Christ ruling on the earth the manifestation <coughs> of God on his throne now that's important you know when Christ rules as the image of God he could rule equally from every single world. But he has chosen this planet Earth to rule from. This planet Earth will represent the center of the galaxy. Not because of us, because Christ chose it. And he rules from the earth. Which is why the universe panel, you wonder, hey, why the universe panel Christ ruling the earth? It's because this is his throne. He's going to make this earth his throne. And we are all his subjects. And under his, under his lordship, we call it. We will serve our Christ. From here, we will serve our Christ, go through all the galaxies in creation. Can you imagine serving God, serving Christ, the image of God, from the capital of the galaxy? And that's why the left panel is chosen. The right panel, creation of angels, it shows the majesty of God in the universe. All his angels, each one of all the six categories, show forth. Actually seven, because there are some unknown ones. But six that we know, they represent the majesty of God. When you look at angels, even from the greatest of them to the lowest, from the category of uh, the, the, the worship, and uh, the Zohar, the cherubim, the seraphim, the three categories, they are majesty. Then when you look at the spirit beings and how they control and rule all the universe, sustain life and atoms and molecules, majesty. And when you look at all the archangels and all the ministering angels, and they all show forth the majesty of God. And so God will show you majesty in the universe. And at the bottom, on the panel was creation of the earth, which is the history of our cube. And the interesting thing is all these ties together. Let's look right at the top again. And uh, all these ties together, uh, you have the first cube, uh, uh, the earth cube, the universe cube. Then you have those three divisions, the archangels, the spirit beings, and what we call the Zohar. And as you look right across each of these, you find that each of the archangels, remember there were four archangels serving Christ. And when they are four, they are four for a reason. No. And it could have been two. Actually, one is enough. Could have been two. Could have been three. Why four? Have you, when you read the New Testament uh, uh, panorama that we gave, and you ask your question, why four? Why not two? Why not three? Because some of you were funny, one, two and a half. There's no half. And why four? Because four represent the completion of the glory of God. Which remember, when God's presence comes, there are the creatures with the four faces. On one side is the face of a man, face of an ox, face of an eagle, face of a lion. And all this ties back to all the panels. And it ties back to what each of the archangels do. And you see here, the archangel Uriel, his over creation of worlds and mankind and of life and death. You see his power in the Old Testament. Always involved in that. And then Gabriel, the angel, always in charge of the gospel and the revelation of Christ. 
Raphael over the spirits of men and over the manifestation of sons of God Mis over the mystery of Christ Michael the archangel over governments and worlds and nations each have their protocol and uh, then of course the mystery angels they are serving under all the angels there are many many subcategories of course then under spirit beings we have here there are those spirit beings and these are all different colors they radiate colors Pastor David has seen reddish uh, or almost like wine reddish actually and then they are bluish and they are all the different colors now they are not just four colors the four can mix multiple colors just like three primary colors can produce all the colors that you see and uh, so uh, but there are these four categorization there are spirit beings and uh, they they are those that, that work along with powers creation energies and life they work together here with the archangel and then there are spirit beings and they involve with peace love mercy the spirit beings involved with wisdom, light, mysteries. And those are the spirit beings that I work with. And then there are spirit beings involved with glory, thrones, and dominions. And uh, they work along with Michael, the archangel. And uh, then there are this dimension called the Zohar, taking the Greek word itself. The word living beings in the word Re Revelation, the Greek is Zohar. From the word for the life of God, Zoe. So these are just called life. And uh, when you translate it, they are just lives. And so that's why the Bible translates living beings. And uh, they are the face of a man, ties to this whole area, Jesus, Son of Man. And all these four Gospels tie together. And uh, then the face of an ox tie, of course, Jesus, Savior of the world. A face of an eagle, Jesus, Son of God, ties with each of the archangels that are involved. Then you have the face of a lion, and uh, <coughs> ties to kingship, rulership, Michael, and uh, Jesus, King of King, Lord of Lords. Now, why we show you this church is this. In this coming revival, we will have to work closely with all the four archangels. And all the four angels have the dominion, <coughs> have their work and their call. And sometimes some of you, your angels, some of your angels that have been assigned to you, are from one of these four angels. Depending on the work and the call that you do, there will be, actually, of the 4,000 that we saw in the end times, uh, in the in the end times just before the rapture we will be sending out 4,000 people and they will be from this for many the third generation and some from the second generation we consider the first generation of this end times and uh, this 4,000 they will represent exactly a thousand each of this a thousand each now all the numbers are very specific. With the Jews, you know why they have 144,000? Because the Jews have 12 divisions. And there are 12,000 from each division. But in the church, we, have, we work with slightly different protocol. We have the four angels over different things. And the last generation that goes out, the 4,000 finally going out, uh, just before the rapture, thousand each, and working with each of those mighty uh, angels of God. But there is one more angel who will come into the midst of our church. Melchizedek, that I have talked about before. And at this morning, those of you who hear this message for the first time, you need to rehear uh, the teaching that we touch on 
on uh, at which point did we talk about Melchizedek? That was after we came back. After we came back from New Zealand, the series. Do you remember the series title? Thursday night we touched on it. Friday night we touched on it more Thursday, Friday, yeah. Thursday and Friday. I forgot the series title. But uh, anyway, send an email to Eddie, you know. <laughs> and uh, we did talk Melchizedek, who Melchizedek is. Melchizedek was actually the uh, uh, Adam's guardian angel, and he is actually a cherubim. And, and from the cherubim side, he's supposed to work closely with mankind. That in the end, that's why your name has been renamed Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek, the, which is not his real name actually, he's an adopted name on the earth, meaning things that have meaning on earth. He has a very uh, heavenly sounding name uh, in an angelic language, uh, in a cherubim's language. And uh, uh, he is a cherubim and he was watching over Adam. And when Adam fell and did not fulfill his destiny, he is the only one angel who God gave permission to take on human flesh for some time. And, uh, and when he take on human flesh, he was uh, serving as a priest until Abraham's time. Once Abraham paid a tithe to him and his bless, his ministry was over, he went back. And he has been in heaven until recently when he has manifested just before Australian trip. And uh, then when as he manifest and uh, it was on a Sunday that and before that, one year before right, you heard someone call you Makisi that exactly one year before. Then on that Sunday that I realized that his name was supposed to be Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek came and manifest himself. And he's joined now with our Melchizedek, which is why he takes on the name. So sometimes when we talk about Melchizedek, since we couldn't refer to him by his angelic name, we always say Melchizedek the cherubim. And then he's different from Melchizedek the son of David. <laughs> <laughs> Two different beings. But they are joined. And why? Because you remember how we thought of the rapture? That in the rapture, that we saw the rapture took place in a worship service. And the last worship service is led internationally, coordinated among the 10,000 churches and other churches that join with us, all led by the cherubim. We will enter the worship by the cherubim's worship. And then the rapture takes place. And all these things is to show us that we have to work with all the angels that want to come to work closely. Tonight this revelation is brought forth so that you can work more aware. With greater awareness. Because some of you, you have a revelation given to you as to the source of your Lieutenant angels or your angels that are assigned to you, who sends them to you, will tell you the kind of work that you do in these end times. And with the permission of God, uh, then our prophet will be able to give you more information. I remember our prophet said that it's time to reveal the history of the angels and, and the angels and wait upon the Lord. And in God's full of time, He tell you. And knowing all those things. And who sends them is important to tell you uh, your work. Don't take it for granted just because they're all assigned, this, everything's automatic. You have your part to do. Fast, pray, seek God, grow in God. And remember, all these predictions and prophecies are on the assumption you keep walking with God. At any moment you stop walking with God, someone else will take your place. The anointing that was yours will be taken and give it to someone else who is more faithful, who might carry your anointing and their own anointing. So it behooves us to be faithful to God, serve God faithfully. And then, when you look at all these things finished, we look at the next uh, part of this uh, drawing. It looks slightly more complex, 
Now, the cube has 12 lines. Remember the 12 gates in the book of Enoch. The lines of the cube represent entrance. Actually, it looks like a cube, but actually it can all be merged into one. You could almost see all as one straight panel. And all line up as all the different panels. And, uh, but as the panels join one another, and you find all the 12 lines. And this one I just threw in so that you know that it ties to love. And uh, you see, why I quote Exodus 34 6. Exodus 34 6 talks about the glory of God. And God proclaimed, He is the Lord, He is loving, He is kind, truth, merciful. All those qualities of God contain His glory. Moses didn't ask God to show kindness, truth, long suffering. Moses just said, Show me your glory. But when the glory came, God proclaimed things regarding the glory. And these are the proclamations of God. They tie to the lines of the cube. And uh, in uh, 1 John uh, 5, 7, uh, it speaks about uh, these are the three that bear witness in heaven. These are the three that bear witness on earth. The lines of the cube all tie nicely together with uh, all those uh, things to do with spirit, word and uh, all and wisdom word father etc and uh, then you have like goodness righteousness patience and all the uh, fruit of the spirit uh, favor peace temperance meekness all those then you have Isaiah 11 verse 2 remember the seven spirits of God and uh, all the seven spirits are inside in the lines of the gate that join together and uh, seven spirits of God in Isaiah 11 verse 2 spirit of knowledge and fear of uh, fear of the Lord, I put fear of Yahweh because that's the exact translation. And spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit comes in my spirit of the Lord, which is actually spirit of Yahweh. And uh, then you also have uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13 hope, joy, faith, love. All these lines tie together. There's 1 John 5 8, blood and uh, water, spirit, and here there's angels too. And so I show that. All these, the cube, all joined together, much together, and we only perceive this as a cube. But you can see, like, dimensions or whatever, it, and all of this tied together in a lot. As we consider all these, thank you, and that's more than enough. And uh, even if you forget all those things, just remember that all the lines that join the two cubes together produce together 12 lines and 12 gates. <coughs> You read the book of Enoch, and uh, they all through this gate say, Okay, some of you are saying, How do I enter the cube? You are already in the cube. Whenever you experience any part of love, joy, peace, long suffering, whenever you experience a touch of this God's glory, you're already tra traversing on the line of the cube and moving between all the different dimensions. So, all these are expressions and dimensions of spiritual things. See, spiritual things are measured differently from the physical. In the physical, you measure by kilograms and meters and by time and uh, all those things. But in the spiritual, you measure by the glory of God, you measure by peace, you measure by qualities and attributes of God. Whenever you contact some of these qualities and attributes of God, you're slowly being transformed more and more into the glory and the uh, the presence of the Lord. And so as we consider all those things and, and we have given some general overview of where the church is heading, let's be prepared that we know that uh, the beast is already born, the Antichrist will come forth after phase 3. So we look at the book of Revelation. And uh, we've seen the overall picture. Now we zoom in and we won't be finishing it tonight, but we want to at least close some subject about the beast and the antichrist so that we have a little bit more idea of how things go. In the book of Revelations, chapter 13, there are two beasts. There is the beast from the sea, which is chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 10. And then there is the beast from the earth, which is verse 11 to verse 18. The beast from the sea 
represent the culmination of kingdoms and empires from Babylon right up to the, uh, all the different empires that come and gone and that is why in chapter 13 verse 2 you see that he is like a leopard his feet like the feet of a bear his mouth like the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority the first beast is the antichrist that's why he has the seven heads and ten horns <coughs> he sits on top as the true ruler of the world the empires that world rulers have tried to build but never succeed and finally the antichrist succeeds in ruling the world and the antichrist is younger and this all uh, have been given by supernatural revelation the antichrist is younger obviously than the beast the antichrist is not yet born but will be born after phase 3 that is why he is not allowed to be born you should look at it the other way around he is not allowed to be born until we set the seal in those places and all those things that the church has to go and do and seal then only is allowed because the boundaries will be drawn which is why after we do phase 3 the prophet has to go somewhere to keep drawing the boundaries because the lines of division needs to be drawn and it's almost like saying thus far and no more and uh, then there is the other creature from the, the earth he represents another human in verse 11 to verse 18 of chapter 13 this is the false prophet the false prophet will actually have power and signs and wonders from the devil you see in verse 13 he performed great signs now you know why we have to challenge him with signs and wonders also I know he performed great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man that would be supernatural and part of the other things that Pastor David also saw is he has the power to make the river change course. Right? This power, great power. But even calling down fire is a, a lot of scientists will be marveling at that too. Of course, some of the scientists will say, can I take a sample of that? They want to test everything with scientific knowledge. And uh, it will it will befuddle their science. There will be no explanation, scientific thing. Now, as far as we know, the beast, besides showing all these signs and wonders, the beast will rise from Africa. And as he rises, there are many, many countries in Africa now. You remember the seven thunders? In the seven thunders, in the end, left only eight countries and some of the countries grow bigger because they take up all the territory so the beast will rise up and there is only one country that we go to in Africa to build an altar do you remember which country is that? South Africa the beast rises from He's already a live young man. By the time we go to South Africa, it'll be 2014, he'll be about 10 years old. Will we meet the beast? Yes, along the way somewhere. But not necessarily third face, uh. third face frightens you all. <laughs> Anyone on the go? Well, no one go, only two of us go. <laughs> no, you need not be afraid. I'm, but, almost see the beast eyeball to eyeball with a prophet <laughs> somewhere in the future and uh, sort of recognizing each other's right the true prophet and the false prophet face each other 
Oh, it'll be a sight to watch. <laughs> the only difference is it won't be something like you see, you know, Yoda and the, that guy. <laughs> you go, shoom, shoom. You won't be like that. <laughs> God is more powerful. Yeah, you won't be like a draw kind of thing. No. But there will be spiritual recognition. But they will know their light line. We will be facing them. And we will know our line. That is why we will be so aware of the angels with us. So aware of the line that God has drawn around each one of us and around each one of you too. And uh, some of you have all have assignments on that. And so the beast is going to come and from the nation of Africa, he will show four signs and wonders. He might even use the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, right now, Africa has a symptom of the there are end up false prophets who are doing signs and wonders. Some of them just added the name of Jesus. But they actually didn't do it in Jesus' power. And here's the thing. Some of these false prophets have deceived some of the greatest quote-unquote Revivalists of what people call men of God from the 20th century. Even people from Toronto Revival visit these people without discernment that these are false prophets. They are so hungry for signs and wonders that anywhere where the signs and wonders say this must be God. There are several false prophets that are very prominent in Africa today. And you don't tell genuineness by the size of the congregation anymore because their following is huge. Nor can you tell truth from just the signs alone, but there's a difference. Their claim healings are not really healed. Put to the full scientific test, not exactly the same. And they have no word because they are not sent by God. When God sends a man or woman of God, they always have a message. Correct? It is not. They will have signs and wonders, greater and greater as the last days come. But the sign is a sign. What does a sign do? A sign points to something. A sign tells you about something. There is always a message when God sends a man or woman of God. It is the message that is important. The sign is to tell you the importance of the message. But it's just like someone come and tell you, hey, I got a very important message, so important. Wow, go to go to the rivers, go to mud, you know, swim through glass, and walk here and look all for peace and here. I came with this important message. Hey, tell me, tell me what the message. No, no, no message. <laughs> Just the fact that I said, what? That's the message. <laughs> what kind of message is that? There's always a message. And the message has to be in line with the written word. You tell a false prophet and false apostle too, who knows? You know, the, the, the Antichrist will also form his official church. How do you tell which is real? The side was signed, this side was signed. In the end, the message. Because the devil has no message. The essence of his message, even to Jesus, was to worship him and worship 
gold and silver and worship mammon and worship all the things of this earth. The message of God, holiness, righteousness. There is a totally different message. So a, a, there are false prophets without a message. No teaching, no message, no sharing, nothing. They're just doing it and trying to crowds. They are false. And the body of Christ has no discernment. Even leaders got taken aside. And you will see that this is a preparation for you. Because the beast portfolio is to do signs and wonders. There are a lot of demons already gathered there. And those who are sensitive to the spiritual world but not really open to the Lord might tap on their hand and become the false prophets too. Under the main false prophets. They will gather all under him. They are false signs and wonders but there will be no message from God. No message that's in line with the word. When Jesus prayed to the Father in John 17, He said, I have given them your words that you gave to me. It's the word that is important. And when the people sought for Jesus, they want the power that Jesus had to heal themselves. Jesus at times purposely getting the boat away from them so that they don't just want to get the healing. And then he sat down and teach them. He teach them about what God is like. He teach them what our Father is like. He teach them the true perspective of life. He teach them the meaning of life. He teach them the purpose of this life. He teach them truth that will last for eternity. For he said this is eternal life that they may know God. False prophets, false apostles, false teachers have no message. The only message, they go deeper into sin, go deeper into the world. They were ten with, well, ten with seduction, ten with all those things, but they got no message. That is the distinguishing mark. In, if, if the leaders of the churches would read the Bible, the Bible tells us that if a dream or dream arises and if they speak of signs and wonders, but if the sign and wonder come to pass, even if it come to pass, but if the message is wrong, what did the Bible say? Reject it. If the message is to worship a false god, to turn to other things, reject it. Reject even if the sign come to pass. That's the warning in the Bible in Deuteronomy that Moses gave. So even more, as we confront the end times, this Bible is the only doctrine and place to determine doctrine, righteousness, and purity. Any new message and any new rhema must be in line with the written word. But there will be people claiming to have a written word, but they reject it when you show them things in the written word. Those are what I call the narrow-minded Christians who just don't want to believe in another thing. They are the same Christians who today don't believe in the baptism of the Spirit. They are the same Christians who don't believe in healing. They are the same Christians who don't believe there's such a thing as five faith. Even though it's right in their face. Their explanation for all these things, the Bible had, those things have passed away. They claim to be biblical, but they chop the Bible in pieces and throw it away. So they're not really scriptural. They only take the pieces of Bible they want. Instead of taking all of the Bible. If it's in the Bible, it is true. Um, so there are these two extremes. One group that don't follow the Bible, one group that claim to follow the Bible, but only follow pieces of the Bible. You show them something else in the Bible, they say, ah, that one passed away. And they reject it. So the beast will come 
And during the time that you notice in the seven tongues, when uh, there was a naval battle, and that took place somewhere in the Indian Ocean. At the same time as the, the serpent that came, that's why to hear this message, you must have heard the seven thunders. And, and in your mind, you've got a map of the seven thunders. Uh, there's a serpent in the seven thunders that went all the way and landed near Spain, Europe. Then the ten white tigers with black stripes stepped upon that. And the head of the serpent, the serpent was decapitated. And the head fell over in the Indian Ocean. And then the 20 dogs came and eat up the head and wanted to eat more. And so they came all the way to want to eat more of the serpent. And then the 10 tigers and the 20 dogs fight. And some tigers injured, some dogs were injured. And I think two dogs died, you remember. And then the dogs went back to them. We roughly know when that takes place now. With all these downloads. Putting it all together, when Babylon falls, the key date is when Babylon falls. And in our seven thunders, we have pointed that the fall of Babylon is in chapter 18. 17 and 18 talk about mystery Babylon and chapter 18, Revelations, the fall of Babylon. The fall of Babylon is equivalent to the fall of the United States. Now, as we speak all these things and teach all these things from the Bible, I'm going to make a little footnote here. We respect every country we respect the laws of every country. We respect the citizens of every country. And in no way will we as a church be ever political or advocate any political agenda. My personal stand is the church must be apolitical, which means we are not, we are not involved at all. We will only touch on subjects that are religious and biblical. It so happened that we are teaching from the Bible. And it is the freedom of Bible interpretation. Just like in the Old Testament in Daniel's time, you can interpret Babylonian Empire, Greek Empire, Roman Empire. So the same way, a Bible scholar has a freedom to interpret based on modern countries in that relationship. With that said and done, in the fall of the United States, which is close to where the two fallen angels are released, which is at the end of 7 plus 7, 14 years after the seven thunders, oh, the time is so exact, 14 years. And today is important. It's 14, now you pass your midnight, 14 days after the first anniversary of Pokemon's. 23rd of February. Time for this message to be released. And in that fall on during the time it will be very short time one prophetic hour somewhere after the seven plus seven years when that takes place and we plead with those in the United States those are you good people they are places of refuge and we will speak more about that as we go through this the altar that we build, the nobles. But prepare yourself, those of you 
who are forward planners. I, I know I would love this kind of time. If, if I were just an ordinary believer and not an apostle or a prophet, I would like this kind of message to be told to me 20 years in advance. Because I plan my life 20 years in advance. I don't plan 3 years, 3 years. And so some of you are like that. For your sake, the Lord give you this message. So that you could start planning. Because your plans are going to affect you, your children, and your children's children. If you do not take the proper steps, you might die. Your children might die with you. And your children's children who could have a destiny in a generation to be wretched might also die. And it's for your sake that God is giving this revelation. So that you make the decisions. Don't jump. Here, remember the words that I read earlier. You must do two things. You must obey the written word, but you must hear the voice of God speaking in your heart. It is obedience not just to the written word, but obedience to the voice of God speaking in your spirit and in your heart. And follow that. Follow that voice. Follow your leading in the spirit. Check it by all means. Get counsel by all means. But remember, the prophet and I cannot tell you what to do. Even if you know what you have to do. The most we can do will be confirm what you already hear. In personal direction, we are not allowed to do so. Only false prophets and false apostles will want to control your life and tell you to do every detail. Oh, you know, today must do the today. That is, that is not right. And it is not our jurisdiction because we cannot rob you of your decision making. We cannot rob you of your free will. We cannot rob you of your intelligence. We cannot rob you of your mind and your quality to make a decision for God. Most of all, we cannot rob you of your accountability when you stand before God one day the judgment seat. To give account for your life, you cannot say the prophet told me, the apostle told me. You can only say, I've been hear all these words, I believe, I pray, I come to this decision, I make this decision with the Lord's help. The other thing, and this is most important, we believe in you. We believe in your maturity. We believe you can hear God for yourself. We believe you can study the word for yourself. We believe you're mature and not children in the Lord. And we will teach you ways to hear God. Fasting, prayer, listening, meditation, all God's word. And confirm where you're in danger. Of course, we will fall on. But it is your privilege to make a decision. And this is the greatest of blessings. You will reap the rewards and the joy of having heard God yourself. Why should we rob you of the joy of hearing God for your own self? Isn't that the greatest thing? When a child grows up, isn't the greatest thing when a child grows up, the adult say, Hey, I made this decision on my own. I've earned my first salary. I earned my own living. I'm paying my own way in life. No more dependent on the parent. Isn't that the joy? We must not rob you of this joy. So we can give the general guidelines and see you through. But definitely, we pray for you. So those of you in the United States, remember this, that when the two, around the time, either before or after, Two fallen angels are released. U.S. is going to collapse. And it will be sudden. And there will be natural and all kinds of things taking place. Even before that. You will see it more in the second half of the seven years. Remember, why I divide seven plus seven? Because the first seven is going to be, you know, things are still moving along. The last seven, it become more and more severe. By the time it actually happens, it will be too.
too late. So you must move to the places of refuge. And uh, some of you, you, you guys could be owning a beautiful farm somewhere. But it could be right at the very place where the tsunami is going to hit. <laughs> it's going to be all be gone. God will want you to dream, to vision. And you will know exactly when and move out to save our place. So it is important. This is to save lives. Millions of lives. Maybe even billions. This is to save lives. And when the U.S. falls, around after 7 past 7, 14 years, there will suddenly be two world powers, China and Russia. It will be then that these powers why. But we saw a glimpse in the seven thunders at the moment where the head of the serpent is taken off. It was done from Europe. And guess what? The two fallen angels, when they are released, they will go to two European countries. Uh, one, of them, one will go to Europe, one will go to the Middle, Middle Eastern country. And they will be stirring up things. And then we know that something will happen that will cause the collapse, both natural and some event. And with that, Suddenly, the king of the east will try to rise up in his power. As he tried to rise up in his power, the European sector will retaliate. And so, during that period, we might see something like war. And as the detailed vision of the seven thunders show there is a naval battle, as the 20 ships move around the Cape of Africa, the southern part of Africa, as it moves around trying to head towards US, the fires burn in Africa. And that was when it became a country. So we can see the turmoil, the realigning of the country simultaneously, simultaneously taking place around after the 14 year mark. Between the 14 year mark to the time our seven thunder prophets is taken home as a calendar sign from the Lord. And but we know that already the beginning part is a lot of shaking before the 20 dogs are driven back with two ships destroyed. And then the powers are slowly being alive. So that ties us back to where the beast rises. The beast will rise and rise and rise in Africa, especially after the seven plus seven years. And then we realize that by that time, the beast is a young man. And he began to have great influence at some point, the bees will go to Europe and invent something like an energy, energy machine. And I asked Pastor David to describe this. He says, you know, you know, like the wind, you've got the wind energy, but that's taking wind energy. But probably something that takes energy from just the earth. Now, I know scientifically there are all kinds of energy, solar energy, wind energy, wave energy, geothermal energy, and all these various energies, they are there. But there's one energy that if you read science closely enough, that Nikola Tesla talked about, when he said that actually there's enough energy on the earth because the whole earth is like one huge battery. When the earth is positive and the atmosphere is negative. And that is why when lightning flows, 
Lightning flows from electrons gathered in the clouds. And it flows upwards a bit, and it flows down into the ground. One bolt of lightning is a lot of energy. And Tesla actually, in his writings, long, long ago, as electricity was being discovered, talked about a method by which you can tap on the Earth's electrical energy itself. He didn't get to bring it to fruition. But it has been talked about and discussed by some scientists. And it's only a matter of time before the beast comes and says, he knows how to tap on the energy. Suddenly the world will pay attention. I mean, we all need more energy. And the world will pay attention and the beast will win over Europe because of that. It's invention. And the beast will not mean the Antichrist. They will know by each other. But the Antichrist won't demonstrate the same power as the beast. The Antichrist gift is to unite the world. He can talk. And there are some things about the Antichrist that are mentioned here in the book of Daniel. It says here, About the Antichrist in uh, chapter 7. The little horn in verse 20 of Daniel chapter 7. And the ten horns that were on his head, and the other horn which came up before which three fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. Remember the seven thunders we identified countries that fall off. Uh, we identify seven of the ten countries. There are only three more countries we couldn't identify. More will be revealed. We have identified seven of the ten horns. But when the Antichrist comes, he will rise from one of the horns. Now if he rise from one of the horns, definitely one of the horns is Russia. That would be the eight. Left two more. And so, he will rise and he will conquer tree, dominate, dominate over tree. And uh, so, if he conquers tree, and it's one of the ten, when seven takes away tree, well, you have seven and what will conquer will be the, the eight. So, it's seven and eight at the same time. And it says there, it was 21. Uh, it says here, he spoke pompous words. His appearance was greater than his fellows. I wouldn't be surprised if the beast and the antichrist are really good looking fellows. There are a lot of women trying to propose and marry them. <laughs> Without knowing they might become Mrs. Beast and Mrs. Antichrist. <laughs> of course the Bible did say antichrist is not going to marry. Uh, it's hint a little bit. There's some hint about that. I know. Uh, I don't know about the beast. Maybe more revelation to come. With the, all this, you know, stir up the prophet. Hey, go back, go and dream and see more visions. <laughs> and tonight, he may see more enter the cube. And uh, hey, verse 21, it says, I was watching and the same one was making war against the same, prevailing against them. Until the angel of this came, and the judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. That's right at the ending. But there's some more said about this uh, uh, horn again, and this beast. It was 25, repeated again. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, shall intend to change times and law. Tell you he can twist, turn, and change things. What will the Antichrist do? He will, because remember, if the US fall, there's only two more power, Russia and China, a king of the east and a king of the north. He will be the one who make peace with both. What will be the, the goal of the Antichrist? To rule the world. One ring to rule them all. Oh, yeah. 
don't know which name it came from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the rule of war. And it will be a revival of Nimrod's vision in the Tower of Babel. Except it won't be building our Babel physically. It will be uniting the world under one government, one religion, and one people. Remember the Tower of Babel. And I was asking this Pastor David, what described to me what the Tower of Babel was like. And so he goes into the queue. And the Tower of Babel is like is like so huge. And uh, it's a uh, is like built upon two a valley between two mountains and using the mountains as part of the foundation. Mountains, my friend. And you think the Great Pyramid is huge. Now there are the Great Pyramid, which no one knows who built, and then there are those smaller pyramids built by the pharaohs. The Great Pyramid is the biggest of them all. The Great Pyramid is like a plain toy compared to the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel is so huge that I asked Pastor David press him for some measurement. He says it's about 30,000 feet high. 30,000 feet high. That's taller than our tallest size skyscraper. Our tallest size scraper, the one in the Baj Khalifa, is slightly less than one kilometer. That's supposed to be tallest. This is huge. It will have, when he estimate, he said, if we walk, in those days, elevators probably not invented, if we walk, and inside our cities, and planes fly at roughly 40,000 square feet when they're cruising. So you can imagine how tall it was. And it's so huge that it will take you, he said, six months. And then six months for him is about one year for you all. <laughs> he moves very far climb mountain. He yeah, hangs feet. Um, so he said, just to walk up is six months. Think about that. Even the tallest building in the world today, if you with a bit of rest in between, you can finish it in one day. It's six months. That's huge mega structure. To unite the world. Bring it into a modern context. He wants to unite all nations under him. And so he will be a fantastic peacemaker. The world will fall in love with him. And when he unite King of the North, King of the East, everyone will say, Wow. Oh. And then, of course, the beast will be controlling Africa, Middle East. And uh, with the exception, they don't go to Israel yet. Israel is the finale. And then they go to Europe. And somewhere, both of them influencing Europe in some way, uniting it. And then finally, the day comes. That somewhere, somewhere, we, that day we still haven't pointed, but we know that the peace. Hey, you did saw the beast and the Antichrist go to Rome. In that vision, were you still alive? Well, I mean, I was still alive. You're still alive? Ah, that's good enough for me. Which means it's before 1948. Mm. 2048. Uh, 2048, yeah. sorry. <laughs> go, back, go back to the foundation of Israel. <laughs> By the way, 2048 is about 100 years after Israel was born. Oh, sure. Israel was founded in 1948. Wow. Exactly 100 years after Israel founded, seven thunder prophet go. <laughs> All are significant. And so in bef so somewhere between 2026, 2027 to 2048. But closer towards 2048 will be, as time comes near, we will pinpoint the exact time. It will be one of those calculations that will be pretty precise. The peace and the Antichrist will meet for the first time. 
they will probably know each other, maybe even talk to each other over the internet or phone. They might be using an iPhone 7 at that time. <laughs> if Apple still exists. Either that or they might be using the Samsung. <laughs> but anyway, or something new. Maybe the one that you saw. Samsung came out, something like this. Is it? This evening I saw it. Okay, the, remember we, in the Seven Thunders we told you the digital computer? That you press, press, press and you speak. Who knows they could be talking to each other, but, but they haven't physically met. They will meet for the first time in of all places, the capital of the Roman Empire. The capital of the Holy Roman Empire. Everything has a historical significance. They will meet for the first time in Rome, most likely at the invitation of whoever is of the head of Rome. So it is significant over the past week that you saw the Pope suddenly resign. Either whoever replaces him, if he's young enough, and he lived long enough, because sometimes you know, the guy who takes over also as more. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit more. And the guy may die. There might be the next one. But if he's a young fellow, young enough, and got the energy, the next one may be the guy who invites. And then they say, whoa, here they are, welcome, welcome. And the world will be watching. Because they're going to be welcome with open arms. The Jews will be watching. The world will be watching. Will be, wow, this person is so wonderful, united, more peace, the peacemaker. That's why when they cry, peace, peace, destruction will come, suddenly come. And when the Antichrist meets the beast, oh, sparks fly. And somehow they begin to work closer and closer together. And for the first time, the Antichrist not only used wealth and power, he will bring religion into his forte. The man who unites nations. Now, Will unite all churches. And he will also bring peace to all those of different religions. He will bring peace to the Sunnis and the Shiites. And then the Jews will be watching. Oh, is this the one? The one rabbi will whisper, is he the one? The other one say, I think he's the one. You're talking about the one Messiah, right? Not the anti-Messiah. Then the other rabbi will whisper and say, in our Old Testament, there's no anti-Messiah. <laughs> only in the Christian got anti-Messiah. With us, only Messiah and Messiah. So he must be the one. So in their council, finally, the rabbis and Israel will all come together and say, you must be the one. Because the beast will always say, will always give favor to the Antichrist, to promote the Antichrist. And finally the day will come when the Antichrist has brought peace to all world religion. He has brought peace to all nations. And he will be welcome to Israel. And that will be when he comes in. I tell you, the Jews will welcome him as a Messiah. They will celebrate. Wow! The Messiah is here. But it will be the Antichrist. And the day that they step into Rome will be quite close. That's why I put the date quite close to the prophet's home away. Do not know how fast. I always like to tease it. As they step in, they say, Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> but when they step in, 
they have finished their work. They have united the world. It is ready for their second phase. They have, they have built the Tower of Babel again. And at that time, it will still be the church around because my church has taken place. The church will be aware. A lot of churches will say, Oh, let's be part of this. And then there will be some of us there who will be saying, No, no, this is Antichrist. Boy, inside, inside. <laughs> there will be a group saying, This is a work, inside, inside. <laughs> and we are all, you know, be hearing contrary message. But the truth will be announced. And finally, when they have, he will build some sort of center in Jerusalem. After Jerusalem is the center of almost all religion. And he will build it like some uniting the world. Politically, religiously, every economically he control the whole world. And the church will be around still. Remember, most of the church is gathered in the places of refuge. And they won't show their true colors here. And then by that time, the moment our prophet dies, or goes on to be the Lord, from 1948, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I keep you. <laughs> I think this is back to the future. You know, the movie Back to the Future, always go back to the past. Anyway, <laughs> 2048, 2048, when our prophet goes, between our prophet homegoing to the time when I'm translated, will be the most tumultuous time for the church. The Antichrist and the false prophet will wish their full But not to worry, the church will grow in might and power. But concentrated a lot on the place of refuge. And the Antichrist and the false prophet cannot go into the boundaries. They are drawn. Until as the end time nears, very, very near, the last instructions will be given. By that time, we have trained 4,000 people. And the last instruction should be given. And when it's given, then I'm taken up. Then the last phase, where the group represented by Maki Sinek, by that time, Andy will be looking for heaven. <laughs> Most of you will be looking for heaven. And the generation, which is the second generation, and the third generation will be that group waiting for the rapture and they will know exactly when the rapture is at least close to the time at this time both of us and a small group of us know exactly when the year of the rapture is but not the day or the hour but from studying the Bible, I cannot be tell the season. We come close to the season. A whole week of 24 hour worship will be organized. And there will be a message sent out to, by the 4,000. Tell everyone about the preparation. And as they went out everywhere, more than half of the 4,000 will become martyrs. With their martyrs reward, of course. And then during the last worship, which will be under the Melchizedek, the chairman being using Melchizedek, the son of David. By that time, what? Wow. You're probably in your 70s. 
and he is still recalling his youth. youth. <laughs> the generation will all be very young. Scholar all part of it, you young ones. And so all of it. And then they will all be worshipping the Lord. And in one high moment of worship, the rapture takes place. Those not in the worship, not rapture. See, you think the Antichrist and the beast are going to stand around and let you do all these things? Of course, they cannot enter into the area of the boundaries. But outside the boundary where they can, they will, they will stop the message. That's okay. But when the organization of the 24-hour worship is there, the Antichrist will also have his own worship service. I don't know what songs he will sing, but he hundred percent copied every single song, changed the wordings a bit, might even keep the tune, so that while we sing "Amazing Grace," the other side might say "Amazing Grace," just slightly different. <laughs> People there will say, hey, which worship to go? You go wrong worship service, miss the rapture. Dangerous times. And in fact, because the rapture takes place almost in secret, as the people are worshipping, and any guys couldn't be bothered about us trying to concentrate on his own thing, he didn't find out about the rapture until about a day or so, when he find out about the rapture, oh, he was furious. And that is when the, when the moment the rapture takes place, the seven years of tribulation begin. So the rapture takes place before the seven years, the last week of Daniel, the seven year tribulation. And the moment it takes place, how will the Antichrist tell the world about the rapture? How many people will be the rapture? With the rapture? Possibly a billion people. Because I'm believing of a billion souls. Now a billion might have, a lot, some of you are among the billion might have gone off already, but we still place. How will the Antichrist explain? the absence of a billion people. Easy. You just turn the page and say, now folks, he showed himself as the real power. He began to show himself as, he won't come and announce and say, and in public announce on the internet, with the bees creating fire, all <laughs> and then he is reading the announcement. Today, in the absence of unbidden so-called Christians, we like you to know that I'm actually the Antichrist. <laughs> he won't be announcing like that. No, after the rapture, he will show he has greater power and says. He is actually not a man. He is a God. And he will show God like power to deceive the world. He will do things. And the day the rapture takes place, he will show God like power with the beast. The devil will immediately begin to manifest even more. And before the rapture, he read experiment with the mark of the beast. Before the rapture, the mark of the beast are voluntary. But I tell you, even voluntary, a lot of people lining up. You know, when the, when the first time the mark of the beast is invented, and he will experiment with it, it will be like people lining up to buy the iPhone. I want to be the first. Yeah, 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 first. <laughs> The people like me up. 
They might even lie up 24 hours before. Just for the mark of the beast. Because it's a new thing, intake. Say, wow, oh, you know, now my phone just press D. <laughs> However, technology works by that time. And they will be lining up for that. So you all experiment. And there still be a lot of people. But after the rapture, when he revealed himself and said, God, with great power, we need people to worship him. Anyone who doesn't have the mark is hunted down. It won't be persecution alone. You will be hunted down. And all the areas of refuge that the line is drawn after the rapture, the Antichrist sends out armies. He conquer Australia and New Zealand, conquer all those places. The only place he cannot conquer is where Enoch Elijah will manifest. As the rapture takes place, Enoch Elijah came down. So it's almost like, you know, a lift system. Shooting the truth, they come down. But the two are equal to all good now. So the rapture drop, these two come up. Minus the sound effect. <laughs> Because otherwise, Eddie would think him. They all go, shoo. Then they took him up. Boing, boing. <laughs> <laughs> so they would just come and mm -hmm. They will manifest themselves in Israel and start gathering their followers. Because when the Antichrist manifests as a God, for the first time, some people will realize this is not what I want. There will be good people who will deceive, but not born again. They realize, hey, what we got ourselves into? And they want to pull out. But anyone who don't have the mark, or the beast, you'll be hunted down. And that's why I said, I'm not sure whether anyone forcibly had the mark force on them. Maybe some. So they're dragged, screaming and kicking. Ah! No! 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 Ah! Yes! 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 So you never know how it takes place. Because with the mark will come some sort of Kind of thing. That's why anyone who has a mark, your names are out of the book of life. And when you know all these things are happening in tribulation, do you still want to be in the tribulation? Some Christians think, oh, tribulation is nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah, ah. <laughs> 40 days fun. Yeah, 40 days fun. No, no food to eat. Money cannot use. Money is gone, abolished. He controls everything. And you actually become the game that is hunted, you know, like they hunt for ducks. You be one of the ducks. You be hunted down. Anyone, it will be dark hunting season is open. <laughs> Except those without the monk are the ducks. And there will be some people who still believe. In fact, a big slaughter of human beings. It will probably be the biggest slaughter of human beings. Because you know us human beings, eh? we don't simply acknowledge another God. There will be those who acknowledge another God, but most human beings will resist being ruled by a God. Especially atheists. And there will be the biggest slaughter of human beings more than World War II. And some of them will be believers in God. That's why they are the tribulation saints who cry out to God. When will all this be over? Because it will be raining blood all the time. And Elijah and Enoch will come and manifest. And the 144,000 
leaders under him. There will be more than 144,000 saved. They will travel in the spirit to preach the gospel. So they will go somewhere, preach and save people as they will be preaching the gospel, telling them about Christ. And then by the time the Antichrist and his army come, boom, they all disappear. No need passport. So there will be a group that survived. There will still, and there were many people still have a chance for salvation. Some of those who were neutral will start turning back to God. That is the first three and a half years. And in the middle of the three and a half years, now we realize the Antichrist, before the teaching was, what's the different teaching now and before? Before we show that the Antichrist showed himself in the middle. But now we know, teaching corrected, he showed himself at the beginning. So whatever happened in the middle is even worse. In the middle of the tribulation, God allowed him to succeed in killing Enoch and Elijah. Wow, we be almost like a big slaughter. And then all the others will be running to caves and places to hide, protected by God. And if not, Elijah will challenge the Antichrist. Actually, they will walk out from the place. Probably in Jerusalem, they will be challenging and they will be killed according to Revelation 11. For three days and three nights, their body are just laid open there. The Antichrist tried to shame the white show and say, See how powerful I am. But at the end of three days, according to Revelation 11, Enoch and Elijah are resurrected. resurrected. They're taken up in Revelation 11, in verse 7. When they finish the testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. So we know one thing. Who is the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit? Well, you find him in chapter, chapter 9 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 9. Look at the beast that ascends. The army of the horsemen were 200 million. And the four angels were being prepared in verse 15 for the hour, the day, and the month, and the year. This would have to be released. But then in chapter 9, the first part, there was the beast from the bottomless pit. And the smoke of the Lord locusts arise. And in verse uh, 4 and 5, they will command not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So in the three and a half years, the first part, those under Enoch Elijah, when they are safe, their method is slightly different. They won't be going and giving all the call and saying, we're going to sing just as I am without one thing. And as we see, just as I am without one thing, slowly make your way to the house. Those of you who raise your hands want to be born again, you won't be like that. You know, Elijah ministered differently. When you want to be safe, they will probably do something. Else. It won't be so rough, lah, but they might put something on some spiritual thing again. Say, oh, what's this mark? The mark of God. Versus the mark of the beast. Do you notice there's a different mark? All mankind is marked. Either you're marked by the beast or you're marked by God. And he said, why is that mark important? Hey, without that mark, the demons come after you. Because in the first three and a half years, the bottomless pit opened. So now again, I say, ask the question, how many now wants to be in the tribulation? And all of them coming out, they will look for anyone without 
the love of God. They will attack and torture. Probably those, everyone will say, ah, ah, don't torture me, I'll have the mark of the beat. <laughs> okay, you're one of us now. Get behind us. <laughs> and stop torturing. You never know what the activity will be like. Horrible, horrible time. So there will be still good people and the bad people, the bad become evil. And after Enoch and Elijah have been killed by the beast from the bottomless pit. That gives you a clue. The bottomless pit is released before. The four fallen angels also died and all run wild, destroying mankind. That is just the first three and a half years. And when Enoch and Elijah were raised up in verse 11, after three and a half days, the breath of life of God entered them and they stood on their feet. Wow, all must be shocked. Because at that time, power against power, power of the devil against the power of God. The devil showed, trying to show he's a God. Antichrist trying to show he's a God. The beast is the prophet of the false God. They're challenging each other. Suddenly, you know, Elijah will rise up. And then it was like a great fear came upon. Oh, Antichrist must be annoyed. Then we have a loud voice from heaven. They said, come on here. There will be the mid-tribulation rapture. And that is Enoch, Elijah, 144,000, and all those who believe, shoom, the last and final rapture. <coughs> those who never got killed in the tribulation, because a lot of them got killed. But in the second mid-tribulation mid rapture, every place where they were raptured from, the ground became cursed. The whole earth changed, like green grass, rapture, pew, or everything dry. Because after the middle of the tribulation rapture, there are no more good people left on earth. No more. Everyone left is evil. And in the last three and a half years, after the mid-tribulation rapture, the abomination of desolation. Now you know what the abomination of desolation is. The abomination desolation we thought was just the Antichrist come and sacrifice a pig in the temple. It's worse. Since there are no more good people on earth, the last of them all that can be saved is saved and taken away. Only the evil people left. And the devil and his fallen angels. And when that mid-tribulation rapture took place, Satan began to give power to all those people under him. And Satan will try to recreate the earth in his own image. There will be open vision for the people on earth, but from an evil point of view. Fallen angels were once again made with women. And the same fall like in Genesis 6 will take place. They will reproduce and produce a new species. They will try to make the earth their kingdom, the way the devil wants it. And there will be giants born of angels and human beings. The shortest among them, one story tall. A three story tall. Three story tall. Tallest among them, six stories tall. And they will be roaming on the earth. And there will be people with the devil's power. No need money, no need anything now. And the devil will promise them eternity. The devil will promise them everything under the sun. Without telling them in three and a half years, everyone will be judged. The whole earth will be a horror. Now think again. What happened to the post-tribulation rapture? You don't want to be around. That is the fallen world. Equal 
and greater than the fallen world before Noah. And Satan will literally show himself. Antichrist will show himself. And then the fallen angels will show themselves who they are. It will be the most horrible world in the three and a half. This is the abomination of desolation at its worst. You don't want to be there. It is like entering hell. It is hell created in the image of the devil. A physical concept of the devil and what he can do. And he will promise power to humans, give them power. And they will all behave like gods running around. Using their power to do things. You don't need money, you don't need anything anymore. You use power, spiritual power. And the Lord will allow the world Come at that for three and a half. That is why when Jesus comes, all those are gathered against Jesus to stop him coming to the earth. And the Bible predicts second Thessalonians. With one breath, Jesus destroyed all of them. Because Jesus is still God. Greater than all these false little gods. So the last three and a half years is worse than my mother's imagination. You don't want to be there. Neither do you also even want to watch from heaven. You'd rather be doing something else in heaven. Because the world will be a hell. Until Jesus comes. By the time Jesus comes and lands a mall on it, it is full judgment. The whole earth will be judged. And during the last three and a half years are all the plagues released on the earth. Remember, one third of the sun, one third of the moon, one third of this, one third of rivers, one third of the seas. Because it's all evil. So judgment after judgment keep falling upon the earth. Some parts turn into like lava, lava when the meteorite comes. <coughs> One third of the seas. So it's judgment, full judgment falling on the earth for three and a half years. What the devil tries to do is utmost to create things of his image. One third of everything keep on judging until Jesus himself finally comes. That's the overall view of the rapture, the seven years. We have more to tell you next week if you last. Give <laughs> <laughs> a prayer. But good news for the church, bad news for the enemy. But we are living in the end. What would you do if you knew you got only decades away? How would you run your life? What would you do if you knew that in 14 years, 13 years, nations will disappear? How would you run your life? Tonight, as you go into God in prayer, Pray. You, if you are here, you have a destiny. You have a destiny to do something in the end time. Don't some of you keep thinking, oh, and they're coming. Let me eat all the wonton I can <laughs> before I can. So your goal is to be gastronomic to and all the food shops all the burnt by the bees. No. If you are here now tonight, you are here listening to this word, you are here listening to this word, whether indirectly or directly, please, I plead with you. Fast, pray, seek God. Ask God what He wants your life to be like. In fact, 
by the next couple of decades, less than a hundred years, we will be all meeting by the shores of heaven, singing song. Can you imagine? You and I have less than a hundred years. How will we live our life? This is why you must pray, seek God. There are some things that are dry cement, they are meant to be. But there are things that are wet cement for you to move and flow. And one thing as we end, a lot of people are not living their life to God's destiny. Because they don't live to God's destiny, their mentals and their anointing of things supposed to be done are waiting for someone qualified to take it up and flow along. And I pray God finds you ready. You be the among the people God raised up in this end time. That you will know what to do with your life and do it well in God. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you continue to establish us in the knowledge of your kingdom. We are in the end times, Father. We know, Father, that this word comes at a price and a cost. And may this word stir us, O oh Father, to reorganize our life, replan our life. So that we heed the call of God. Father, these are things that are direct revelations from you. They confirm your word that does not contradict your word. Never before in any generation has such details been given. We have a lot of speculation in the past about Jesus coming. A lot of speculation about the times, a speculation about the Antichrist, speculation about many things. But these are not words of speculation. These are direct words delivered by the lips of angels, sent to work with us in this end time. What can we say, Father? But here we are, sinners. And we pray that we all be marked for the end time. That you put a mark on each one of us. And not a single one here need to be afraid of the Antichrist or the beast or any of the fallen angel or the, or the demons. Because the mark of God separates us. It's a line they cannot cross. We are all marked by you. Just as in the time of Ezekiel, in a time of war, he prophesied, there are people marked to live, people marked to die. In this end time, we have the mark of God on us. And this is that we separate us from the kingdom of darkness. And we pray, Father, as we enter the end times, not a single one of us will take your angels slightly. Not a single one of us will take your angels slightly. Not a single one will take your word from your spirit lightly. Father, we never dream that the end times will be like this. But here we are. We wait in your presence. And we ask that you seal the work of your spirit in our life. Speak the rhema into our life. Teach us what to do. Teach us, O oh God things of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. And for everyone here under the sound of these words, today you are free from sickness and disease. We release the power and anointing of the Spirit upon this word and message. That wherever this message is heard, wherever it goes, Father, Confirm these words by signs and wonders. Stretch out your mighty hand of the Holy Spirit and heal the sick. Open blind eyes, raise the day, 
Raise those who are lame. Open deaf ears. Heal every sickness and disease. Confirm your word with signs to follow me. For we as the church have the power over all sickness and disease. We can do nothing without Jesus. But under the delegation of Jesus, we release your healing, miracle working power in Jesus' name. And we release your people from the bondage of poverty. We release your people from the curse of the law. We release your people from the bondage and the captive of demonic powers. Let the captives be set free as this word goes forth. Those with the mark of destiny on their life, ear mark, O oh God. Those who belong to you, this day we set them free in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Let your words go forth. And let your angels and your spirit watch over these words and release the fullness of your spirit, the power of your spirit. Confirm your word with signs and wonders, Lord. And let there be an infusion of life to those who receive this word. That they receive their youth renewed like the eagle. Strength to walk this last walk with God. The power of your spirit. That no sickness and disease can touch them. They will live in good health and good wealth. And strong spiritual blessings of the spirit, soul and body. Blessings of peace, blessings of love, blessings of joy. Preserve each one of the spirit, soul and body. Blameless under the coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Release them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's all arise and we sing the song, All to Jesus, I Surrender. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. Yeah. 
Blah!